Mrs. Otto, and I'm going to be teaching you social studies this week. I'm from the Office of Social Studies. I'm the elementary resource teacher. Last week, we learned a lot about primary sources and those that influenced the founders when writing the Constitution. This week, we are going to be looking at the six democratic principles that are the foundations for that Constitution. Our outcome today is you will explore the United States Constitution to identify examples of core civic virtues and democratic principles that guide the United States of America. Let's unpack this job. Core civic virtues. They are habits that are important for the success of the community, even at the cost of individual needs. So what does this mean? It means choosing to do what's best for the community, even if it's not what maybe is best for you yourself. It's for the good of the group. Let's look at democratic principles. Democratic principles are the six fundamental basic truths of American democracy. So now I know there's six of them, I need to learn more about them. Think about it. Why do we need the United States Constitution? Is there somebody in the room that you can talk to about what you think? If not, share it with me. Why do you think we need the United States Constitution? Today we will be exploring the democratic principles that are the building blocks of the United States Constitution. In order to do this, you will be learning about the six democratic principles and examine information from the Constitution. When finished, you will apply what you know about the democratic principles to different situations. The United States was founded as one of the first free democracies in the modern world. After the American Revolutionary War, American colonists, now free and united citizens, had to establish a new government. The citizens passed the Articles of Confederation. The Articles failed in just a few years because they were inherently flawed. The Washington Monument celebrates one of the greatest values of American democracy, freedom. The symbols of American values are all around us. You just have to know where to look. Have you ever played on a sports team like soccer? Although you and your team members may look different, you have the same goals. You want to play your best, and try to win the game. As team members, you work together for the good of the game. You have shared values on the field. Go team! Including good sportsmanship. And support for each other. Even when times look tough. These shared values are what make you a team and keep you playing toward the same goals. We're a team! Maybe you never realized it, but being an American is a lot like playing on a soccer team. Americans come from many diverse or different backgrounds, but they are united by the same values. What values do Americans share? We believe in equality. All citizens have the same rights. For example, everyone has an equal right to an education. Americans also believe in the right to freedom. For example, you have the freedom to express your opinions. Americans believe in the pursuit of happiness, which means every citizen has the right to work towards goals that make them happy. For example, you can have a great time playing soccer with your friends. Where do these values come from? 
A long time ago, our forefathers set forth the rights of every American citizen in some very important documents. One document is the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence guarantees equality, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Another document is the Constitution. The Constitution guarantees freedom of religion, speech, and the press. Symbols of American values are all around us. This is the American flag, one of the best known symbols of our country. The 50 stars on the flag represent the 50 states, and 13 stripes represent the 13 original colonies. The flag reminds us of the freedoms and rights guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution and its Bill of Rights. This is the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. The Washington Monument was built in honor of our first president, George Washington. It is a symbol of democracy. This is the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Liberty Bell was rung when the founders of our nation signed the Declaration of Independence. The Liberty Bell is a symbol of independence. This is the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. It was built in honor of President Abraham Lincoln. After the Civil War, President Lincoln helped free enslaved people in the South. The Lincoln Memorial is a symbol of equality and freedom. This is the Statue of Liberty. The statue holding its torch high welcomes all people seeking freedom. The Statue of Liberty is a symbol of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Being an American means you are part of a diverse nation, where shared values promote equality and freedom. Now that you've learned about civic virtues, also called civic values, let's move on and learn about democratic principles. The framers of the Constitution had to construct a new system of government. Six principles served as guiding lights for the new government. To picture how these principles work, imagine six building blocks. Together they form the foundation of the United States Constitution. We are going to watch a video from Safari Montage in order to learn about the six democratic principles, you may want to take notes. You will need six boxes, one for each democratic principle. States of America. George Washington, who presided over the Constitutional Convention, said sometime after the convention was over that he had come to believe that the Constitution was more than a product of human invention, that divine providence must also have lent a hand. The best way to protect the Constitution is to understand it. The best way to honor it is to learn more about it. Right from the get-go, which is more commonly known as the preamble, we're told who has the ultimate power in this government, the people. We are the ones who are creating it, and it only governs us by our consent. All favor say aye. 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 Popular sovereignty is the Constitution's first and bottom line. Hand in hand with that concept is that government is limited by the Constitution. The government is only empowered to do what the people have said it can do within the confines of the Constitution. I, Richard Bilhouse Nixon, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So the rule of law applies to government just as it applies to its citizens. As far as how our government is structured, James Madison pretty much hit the nail on the head with the Virginia Plan. Governmental powers are separated into three branches, the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. 
Though they are separate, the three branches also share power through a system of checks and balances. So, for example, Congress can pass a law, but if the president doesn't think it's good for the country, he or she can veto it. That's a check by the executive branch on the legislative branch. Though the Constitution was written to create a new national government, it reserves many rights for the states. Considering how attached these delegates were to their states, that's not too surprising. Even today, people can get pretty pumped about where they're from. Uh, my home state is Indiana. I'm from the United States, and um, the city I'm from is from Chicago. Montana. Uh, the state of Texas. I'm from South Boston, Virginia. I live in Illinois. I'm from Iowa. And I guess it's the state where corn grows. Oh, California, greatest state in the world. A system of government that divides power between one central government and several smaller state governments is called federalism. Now that you have your notes after watching that video, we're going to look at our chart that has the meaning and a constitutional example. If you want to add more to your notes, go right ahead. Separation of powers. Power and government is divided into different branches. This prevents one person or branch from having too much power. A constitutional example is there are three branches of government, the legislative, executive, and judicial branch. Principle. Checks and balances. What does that mean? Each branch of government has some power over the other branch. A constitutional example is the legislative branch can make a law, but the executive branch must approve it. Limited government. The government cannot do whatever it wants. The government must follow rules. Constitutional example, the Bill of Rights gives people freedom of speech. The government cannot take away that right. Popular sovereignty. The power of government comes from the people. Citizens vote for elected officials. Federalism. Power of government is divided between national and state governments. Example, the national government will keep the country safe, but the state and local government will keep the city safe. Individual rights. Every person has freedoms that cannot be taken away. Constitutional example, every citizen has the freedom of speech. Democratic principle that you experience each day. Write how you're impacted by that principle. Include a picture if you'd like to be creative. Today, we would explore the United States Constitution to identify examples of core civic virtues and democratic principles that guide the United States of America. Over the next week, start thinking about where you can see some of the, those democratic principles actually being used. Thanks for joining me. See you next week.